This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, where we discuss the latest and greatest news in the world of sports. As always, I'm Alex, back from a Labor Day weekend four-day vacation, I suppose. We did not have a show yesterday, as I'm sure you know, so we are back today to fill you in on all of the things that happened this weekend and yesterday. You know, crazy, crazy weekend of sports. The biggest is going to be college football. We're going to get into that pretty in depth a lot of uh big news in the world of college football a lot of upsets i suppose you could say and a lot of good games as a matter of fact as well we'll get into a little bit of nfl but there's some nfl news that happened this weekend um some quarterbacks going some places and i'll update you on the sports that happened throughout this weekend as well some things here and there of course but let's go ahead and get started with college football. So college football got started officially in sense on Thursday. The biggest game of that day in terms of competitiveness was Tennessee hosting Appalachia State. They only won 20 to 13, not a team who's ranked number 9 in the nation. Not a score you'd want to see there. You know, against an unranked team Appalachian State, not necessarily as uh competitive as you would think against a top ranked team like Tennessee, but only got away with a seven-point victory there. And that was not the last of the close victories either. Stanford ended up beating Kansas State 26-13. It was more out of hand, I suppose, than that score indicates. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stanford was pretty dominant in most of the game. Christian McCaffrey, again, 22 carries, 126 yards, two touchdowns. Excuse me, he was pretty dominant <clears throat> as well. As normal, you know, as one would expect. And then, of course, you had the Baylor versus Northwestern State game where Baylor came out on top 55-7. to seven. So I would say one of the less um, competitive games, you could say, throughout the entire week, followed by, of course, one of the marquee matchups of week one. Number one, Bama hosting number 20, USC. And that, at a time, was close. It was uh, 3 nothing at one point. And then it was 7 to 3 and 10 to 3. And then eventually ended up 15 and then 52 to 6. Yeah, 52 6. Freshman quarterback Jalen Hurts didn't, wasn't amazing um, through the air. 6 for 11, 118 yards and two touchdowns. But he played well. He extended plays well. He uh, definitely started off a little shaky, but eventually came around. And he showed that. Uh, he could play some ball. Clemson, number two, following the number one win, looked to dominate on their own uh, at Auburn and came away another close game, 19-13. to Very close for the number two team in the nation. Deshaun Watson, 248 yards, a touchdown. 123 yards and one touchdown on the, on the ground by their running back, Wayne Gallman. But... It was closer than you would want. Again, Auburn is, isn't a pushover team, but they're not the team you want them to be, especially not a team that would, you know, you would think is going to be the number two team. And they were in it from the beginning to the end. You know, they, they had a 10-3 uh, to three deficit at halftime, but that's very manageable. You know, at the end of the three, it was 13-3. And they outscored Clemson in the, in the fourth. If they could have got anything going in the first three quarters, they could have really been in this game. But it... uh excuse me, showed us Clemson can be beat. Moving to the number three team, Oklahoma, they were, I don't know if you can call it an upset, but they were beaten by number 15, Houston. Now, on my football show, my host, my co-host, Jeremiah, and I have discussed Houston as a possible contender to get up into the top 10 this year. 
And they showed that by beating Oklahoma, 33-23. Baker Mayfield had a pretty good game, 323 yards and two touchdowns. But they were outplayed, you know. Um, There was probably the biggest, the highlight of the game was a missed field goal returned 110 yards roughly to the end zone by Houston for a touchdown that kind of set the tone, you know. They, uh, They outscored them in the second and the third quarter. You know, when it, when it matters, they outscored them. They they moved the ball when it mattered, and that was that was the big part of that game. Houston looked strong in Oklahoma. Their defense didn't look as good. They couldn't get stops. They couldn't get the ball back for their offense at times, especially through that second and third quarter. So be interesting to see where Houston is ranked this week following a pretty big win there against Oklahoma. And not necessarily at home. It was a believe it was a neutral site but Houston did did real well <clears throat> excuse me moves us to the number five team and another upset LSU losing to Wisconsin at home for Wisconsin 16-14 yeah LSU couldn't get anything going I mean Leonard Fournette he did have 138 yards rushing but excuse me they only scored in the third quarter scored two touchdowns in the third that's it you know, and I mean that 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 can win you a lot of games in SEC type, you know, defensive games. But Wisconsin really brought it to them. They really showed that they could beat them. You know, Brandon Harris only threw for 131 yards. He had one touchdown. He had two interceptions. That's not what you want out of you know. They they need more balance at their running back position. You know, he had a miserable minus 15 yards. Uh, on the ground, attributed to some sacks there as well. Excuse me. That's not what you want out of your team. You know, he only found four receivers, one including Leonard Fournette. So you need to really become less one-dimensional. And that's going to be a problem for them moving forward. You know, you're going to want more, excuse me, from your team as a whole. If you're going to compete in the in the uh, SEC and, and remain ranked at a high level, I thought five was a little high for LSU, and there we are, being they they are being beaten week one. Number six team had no problem though beating Bowling Green, Ohio State at home, seventy seven to ten. No, yeah, seventy seven to ten, and that is their sixth highest total as a team, highest since nineteen fifty. This is when they scored 88 points. And 88 is their fourth highest total ever. So three other times they scored more than 88 points. JT Barrett had a rough start, but he came back to end the day at 349 yards and six touchdowns total. Curtis Samuel of Ohio State had 177 yards receiving and two of those touchdowns. Mike Weber, the new running back there, taking over for Ezekiel Elliott now in the NFL. 19 carries for 136 yards. They scored 21 points all but one of the quarters. In the second, they scored 14. It was a pretty dominant game, I'll tell you that. Of course, com- competition, you know, Bowling Green isn't exactly a college football playoff contender, but it was impressive, you could say. Michigan, number seven. Had another impressive back-to-back game. If you were watching Ohio State and Michigan, if you were one of those weird fans that liked both of them, they beat Hawaii at home, sixty-three to three. Man, Hawaii had a tough start. They had to go and play in uh, Australia against Cal, who's not necessarily an easy win. You know, still Pac-12 competition. And then next week you're playing number seven Michigan. So they did lose on the road there, Michigan at home, sixty-three to three. Michigan quarterback Wilton Spite, 10 for 13, 145 yards, three touchdowns. Michigan running back Chris Evans, eight carries, 112 yards, and two touchdowns. Excuse me. Michigan held them scoreless until the fourth quarter. They as well scored 21 in two separate quarters, to the second and third, and 14 in the first. A mere seven points in the fourth, if you can believe that. To win the game 63-3. to TCU had a pretty close call there. 
59-41 against visiting South Dakota State. <clears throat> Excuse me, efforts from quarterback Kenny Hill on the TCU side, 439 yards, two touchdowns. They uh, they had a close call for a number 13 ranked team. Number 14 ranked team, not so much, 48-13 over Rutgers. Jake Browning, 287 yards and three touchdowns. John Ross, leading receiver, five receptions, 90 yards and two touchdowns. Another team that was upset, and this one was a uh, was a nail biter coming right down to the end of the game, in overtime. Texas A&M takes it over it's number sixteen ranked UCLA, thirty one to twenty four. Josh Rosen played well, had a uh, back breaking interception late in that game. He threw for three hundred forty three yards and one touchdown. Threw an interception over the middle to set up a possible winning score, but it did go to overtime. Texas A&M was led by running back Trave- Travion, excuse me, Williams, 15 carries for 94 yards on the ground. Kenneth Walker for the Bruins did have six receptions, 115 yards, and one touchdown, but was not enough to beat the vis- or, excuse me to beat home team Texas A&M. They took that one in an upset in overtime. It was a very good game, but not the best overtime game of the weekend. That belongs. To Texas. <clears throat> Texas hosting number 10 in the nation, Notre Dame. They won in double overtime, 50-47. to 47. It was a really, really good game. Texas quarterback Shane Bushel, 280 yards, two touchdowns, game-winning score there in the double overtime. They had the running back going as well, 131 yards, one touchdown. Their leading receiver, 111 yards and a touchdown. It was an impressive game to watch by Texas. You know, they came in, they said that they can compete with these these top teams, and they uh, they sure did compete. Now, not to mention, you know, not saying that uh, Notre Dame really lost this one. You know, it was a good game back and forth. It's not like they handed it away. Deshaun Kin- uh, Kizer, their starting quarterback, 215 yards and five touchdowns. Malik Zaire. Did play in two passes completed for 23 yards. They played well. They're running back 88 yards on the ground. You have another running, uh, excuse me, uh, Kisner had 77 on the ground there for a touchdown. You know, they had uh, they had some good uh, some good output there. It wasn't exactly like they just gave this one away. You know, this was a good game. Unfortunately, they were on the other side of it. You know, so that's, that's a shame, but... Man, was it entertaining to watch, to say the least, I would say. Uh, it was very, very impressive by a Texas team at home, in my opinion. You know, I'd say it's probably one of the best games of the weekend. But if you include Monday in the conversation, excuse me, I would say probably the best game of the entire week. Excuse me. Now just killing me. The best game of the entire week didn't happen on the necessary weekend, you would say. I would say it happened last night on Labor Day. Number four, Florida State hosting number 11, Ole Miss. Man, oh man, did Ole Miss come out swinging. At halftime, it was 28-13. to 13. You know, this one looked all but done. You have an SEC team playing well, playing strong, and... Came out in the third and were blanked 23-0 to zero in the score column by Florida State. And they were just as quickly as you could snap your fingers. They were right back in it. DeAndre Francois, true freshman, excuse me, threw for 419 yards, two touchdowns. Dalvin Cook continued an impressive campaign there at College Station. 91 yards on the ground. It was very impressive to watch in terms of a comeback. Old Miss, I wouldn't say necessarily gave it away, but excuse me, after halftime, their defense uh, just couldn't stop Florida State. They couldn't stop Francois. They were getting in the backfield. They really were, but I would say Florida State really, really dominated the second half. They had four sacks by one player on Chad Kelly, who threw some suspect passes. He had a good first half, I'll tell you that. Excuse me, he had a really good first half. End of the day, 313 yards and four touchdowns, but three back-breaking interceptions. 
It's not that's not what you need to do. You uh I mean, he threw one ugly one on the end uh, end possession. You know, he int- he he intrigues me. He'll have three straight really nice passes. He had a touchdown pass there late in the game that was a uh I mean, he threw it before the receiver was even looking before he was even thinking of turning out of his route. It was up and in and up again kind of route and uh he threw that thing before he was even ready for it, and timing-wise, it was amazing. It was a beautiful pass. And then he threw some a couple ugly picks, especially the one at the end, underthrown, more like it was a back shoulder pass to the DB than it was to the receiver. He's just an interesting guy, you know. Judging by last night, you know, when people saying he's the best quarterback in the uh, division, excuse me, in his conference, just that's, uh, I don't know. He, I mean, again, he flashed the four, all four touchdowns. You know, he showed poise in the pocket. He showed touch, especially on that last one. Amazing touch and accuracy. But those three interceptions, it's, you know, you got to gotta get rid of them, especially because they were they were gimmies. You know, he threw them right to him, it almost seemed like. But it was definitely the most impressive game. So we have a total of, I think, five top ten teams that were either close or beaten this week. You know, you have number nine. Close game there against Appalachian State, Tennessee, but you know some teams just couldn't couldn't handle it. Oklahoma beaten, LSU beaten, UCLA was beaten. That's three teams in the top twenty-five that were upset this weekend. TCU almost lost. It's just, and I mean I wouldn't say you know just just because Ole Miss lost that's not necessarily an upset. You know that they are a ranked team. Still, you know, Notre Dame lost number 10 in the nation. So a lot of teams, especially the SEC, lost this weekend. Be interesting to see a week two, you know, what kind of action happens this this upcoming week. You know, I would say it's definitely a wacky start for the SEC. Definitely a wacky start for ranked teams. It'll be interesting to see where we go from here. That's why you can't look too deep into uh, preseason rankings. I'll tell you that. But we will take our first break here. We'll take our first break. We'll come back. We will talk NFL news because there's an interesting bit, uh, tidbit of news, I would say, for sure from this weekend in the NFL. And then we'll come back after a second break and we'll talk some more sports news. So don't go anywhere here at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And we are back here at the Golden State Media Concept Sports Podcast. So, the, probably the biggest news, I would imagine, from this weekend in the NFL was something that I woke up to, you know, not expecting to see anything of that nature. Vikings, you know, looking for a quarterback, possibly. Would they get Mark Sanchez? Would they trade for somebody? Would, you know, Mark Sanchez was not named the starter, probably going to get released, you know, kind of. Along those lines, and, uh, excuse me, well, I'm sitting there, you know, in the morning, check my sports pages and such, that's what I do, wake up and check my sports, and I see breaking news, Sam Bradford has been traded to the Minnesota Vikings, yep, Sam Bradford, former Eagles starting quarterback, now Vikings starting quarterback. Pretty um, pretty shocking, I would say, because I felt like they definitely could have gotten somebody for cheaper. 
if you ask me. You know, uh, I think they definitely could have waited somebody who is very similar to um, sorry to Bradford in that sense. Runs a good play action. You know, does good things for an offense that has a great running back in uh, Adrian Peterson. You know, a team that didn't need an MVP type performance from their quarterback. And they went and traded quite a bit for Bradford, I would say. Quite a bit, to say the least. You know, they gave up a first rounder for him. I I don't see how. You know, he wasn't he wasn't uh taken for a fourth a first rounder, excuse me, the first time he was traded from the Rams. I was very surprised to see that, to say the least. You know, they got a first-round pick for him. From the get-go, you were like, wow. Somebody just traded a first-round pick for Sam Bradford. First-round pick next year and a conditional fourth round of the year following. It can change if the if the Vikings reach the NFC Championship game this season. That fourth-round pick will become a third. And if they win the Super Bowl... It will become a second round pick. So needless to say, the Eagles received the first and a fourth. I was just very surprised, to say the least. I was I didn't expect this to, to happen. You know, Sanchez had been released. I thought, you know, hey, go get Sanchez. You can sign him to the contract you want him to, to play under. You know, he'll be your guy. But at the same time, do you think a team might have been Weary of the fact that he was just beaten out by a former seventh round pick with no, you know, passes ever thrown in an NFL regular season game. Maybe. You know, I think maybe, oh, I can go get a young guy for the low, but do I, would I rather have a guy who's been around, you know, who's played more? You know, they gave up quite a bit for him and they still said they weren't going to mortgage their Vikings future on it. I suppose that is relevant to players they have in-house. Now, the Vikings did have eight picks in the 2017 draft, including two in the third and the fourth. They have the ability to move back and forth still, so that is something that's interesting in that sense. They still have the possibility of moving forward, but uh, will they or will they not? You know, That's going to be an interesting thing to see. Bradford will be wearing number eight with the Vikings. It opens the door for his former backup, Carson Wentz, to be the new starter for the Eagles starting week one against the Browns. That has been named. He will start when he's healthy. Well, apparently that is week one. All full go. Now, speaking of Mark Sanchez, he was cut. He was picked up by the Cowboys. Nonetheless, he went... In one week, he went from being, well, excuse me, one offseason, I suppose. He went from being the incensed starting quarterback of the defending Super Bowl champions to the backup of a rookie quarterback, that being Dak Prescott. Yeah, that's tough. I feel like that's a tough pill to swallow for Mark Sanchez, who has... Uh, He's been kind of tossed around since leaving the Jets, you know. He's had times here and there with the Eagles, but it looks like he's not starting this year unless Dak goes down also. Then you think that when Romo comes back, I, you know, he might get released altogether. Which is unfortunate. I've, I've always been a fan of Mark Sanchez, but that is unfortunate, to say the least. I think that he definitely could have made a team better this year. Which team is that? You know, I'm not sure, but I thought he could definitely play for a team. And he's, you know, he's looking for a job again. He, he literally went from being a possible starter maybe a month ago for the Super Bowl champions to now at one point being jobless and eventually now being the backup for a kid who also has never thrown a pass in the NFL, regular season at least. He looks good, though. And, of course, they're going to roll with him ahead of time. Now, Bradford and Sean Hill, going back to that, are splitting reps this week. 
to see who, you know from there they'll decide who is going to be the starter heading into week one, which for them is Sunday, I believe. I think you guys week. NFL football starts this weekend. It starts on Thursday. And then from there, we have a host of Sunday games. And of course, we have all of our Monday night games. Two Monday night games back to back. Carolina is obviously facing Denver week one. Thursday is their game. The Vikings, though, they're facing Tennessee on the road. So we'll see who starts to that game. But it was a crazy weekend for uh, the NFL. I'll tell you what, it was a crazy end of the week for the NFL with all the cuts and so on and so forth. But we're that much closer, that much closer to the NFL season, which starts this Thursday between Super Bowl contestants and Super Bowl rematch. Carolina and Denver. So I'm going to take our last break. We're going to come back. We're going to update you on the little things that happened this week, and I'm going to get going. So don't go anywhere here at the Golden City Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. And we're back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. So what I'm going to do is just update you on a little bit of news here throughout the week that happened this weekend, as a matter of fact. And I'll start first with the golf course, on the golf course, and uh, that is Roy McIlroy did win. He had a victory this weekend at the Deutsche Bank Championship. That was yesterday. He did finish that out. 15 under par there to win the championship over Casey at minus 13. So it was a lot closer than it looked. You know, you had between second place and fifth place. Minus 13, minus 12, minus 11, and two minus 10s. Neck and neck, even on the sixth place there, minus 10 as well. Neck and neck, but Rory did pull away there. Two more shots up. Then second place finish it there. Minus 15, he won a crisp 1.5 million. He rallied from six back to win it. Very impressive. His first first win in a while. So it's nice to see Roy get back up there. And then we had tennis as well. Very exciting weekend in tennis. Unfortunately, Venus lost. Yeah, Venus Williams lost this weekend in straight sets. It was, uh, you know, it happened. She was upset. World number 10 beat her. You know, it's not what you want to see, but unfortunately, it happens. You know, Serena did move on, but unfortunately, Venus, she did get beat. You know, and there was a lot of matches yesterday. Big, big day yesterday. Venus was beaten by Karolina Pius, P- sorry, Pliskova. Like I said, in, uh, not straight set, excuse me, but, uh, she did lose the second and the third there. Serena did win. She was, I mean, number one in the world against a number unranked, as a matter of fact. So you would expect her to win, and she's just been a powerhouse. Another upset, though, was uh, number four in the world, Razwanka. She was beaten by Anna Kunja. Straight set, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. So that was another big upset. In the men's side, uh, Andy Murray did advance, beating uh, Grigor Dimit- Dimitrov, excuse me. Dimitrov, uh, straight sets, 6-1, 6-2, 6-2. Dimitrov is the 22th ranked man in the world, but Andy Murray, of course, being number two, did expect to win that one, and he did. He handed, he pretty much handily won that one. And one more upset that happened yesterday in uh, Juan Martin Del Potro, unranked currently, did beat number eight in the world, Dominique Thiem. So this is a pretty big weekend in tennis. We're moving into the semifinals of the U.S. Open. And the men's bracket currently looks like this. Novak Djokovic taking on Songa, number nine in the world. 
winner of that will move on, of course, to the semifinals. So we're in the quarterfinals currently. We have Pouye and Monfi going number 24 and 10 in the world. Del Procho moves on to face number three in the world, Stan Vavinka. And Andy Murray, number two, is facing off at number six, Nishikori. That is the quarterfinals as we see it now. And moving on to the women's, it's going to be a pretty interesting bracket to say the least. Venus was knocked out. So moving to the women, if it will load for me so I can read it to you. Serena will face off against number five in the world, Halep. Uh, Venus has defeated her, does not have an opponent yet. She is looking to face the winner of the Kunja Radwanska match. Radwanska, number four in the nation, or sorry, in the world there. Then we have Car uh, Caroline Wozniacki facing off against Seven Stova. And Angelique Cooper, number two in the world, facing off against number seven in the world, Vinci, in the quarterfinals. So moving into the semifinals, we will definitely see some good matches there. Serena is expected to win again. Will it be another matchup against her and Cooper? I don't know. But I will keep you in the loop and always aware here at the Goals and Beauty Concepts Sports Podcast. But we're going to end it here. Ben will be back with me tomorrow. We'll talk about his wonderful, I imagine wonderful, Labor Day plans. We will talk more football as we get closer to the, the, the first game of the NFL this season. We will talk baseball. We will talk anything you can imagine. So as always, you can find us on our website, jsmcpodcast.com, on YouTube at GMCMC Podcast, a sports podcast as a matter of fact. You can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play, GSMC Sports Podcast, as well as on iTunes and oh, I said iTunes. That's Instagram, I was going to get that one. And Twitter, at the GSMC underscore sports handle. GSMC underscore sports. And Facebook at GSMC Podcast Network. I'd like to thank you guys for listening. For Ben, I am Alex. We will be back tomorrow. You guys have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you then. <laughs>